Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, we're out here in the tunnel and I am trying to get some pruning and trellising done this morning before uh, the rain hits us again and I have to make the trek back to the house. Uh, I have a feeling that I'm not gonna get done with all this in time and I'm probably gonna be running back to the house um, in the pouring rain, but that's okay. Kinda just wanted to walk y'all through the process of how I'm pruning the tomatoes out here in the tunnel. Um, mainly, uh, what I'm going to be doing today is probably stuff that you've seen before. There's all sorts of pruning videos out there on tomatoes. One of the new techniques for me this year, though, is um, actually pruning the fruit clusters themselves, uh, which makes me a little nervous. I've never done that before, um, but it came recommended to me to give that a shot. So I am going to be pruning off all the suckers. I'm going to be pruning off a lot of the lower fo foliage on these plants um, since they are continuing to grow up and I'm gonna be pruning fruit clusters. So I wanted to walk you through that. I'm not gonna prune the fruit clusters on every single plant because it makes me nervous. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna do about half a row pruning fruit clusters and giving that a try and seeing how it works out versus the ones that I don't prune this year. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to walk you through that process. So before we get started, I wanted to show you this. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so if you've been watching this channel or you follow me on Instagram, you know that I had had some pretty serious aphid pressure out here in the tunnel recently. Um, I had done a couple of things to try to help control that. I had sprayed some soapy water and I had bought some lace wings and released them out there. Both of those methods had helped a lot, but, but each time the aphid situation would come back, it would come back a little more intensely than the time before. And so anyways, here recently I've noticed that I haven't had a lot of aphids out here lately and I haven't done anything really I had kind of just been keeping an eye on them and hadn't really kind of just kind of just stopped intervening um well I noticed a couple ladybugs out here literally just like a couple ladybugs um and then I came out here yesterday and I want to show you let's see if I can find one that I can show you um, but I noticed these guys out here and I thought oh man I got a whole new pest issue of something I don't even know what it is do you see that try to focus on that I don't know if you can see that but anyways these little they're like little slugs almost um, and they're everywhere I mean and I almost came out here yesterday and I almost smushed every single one of them because I thought they were slugs <laughs> and um, my friend Sean was like oh those are that's a ladybug larva so I have ladybug larva on every single one of these pepper plants down here which is awesome no wonder my aphid population has gone down because they are chowing down on some aphids which is pretty neat but um yeah i thought that was pretty cool it's like a gardening win you know okay so for the tunnel out here i've been coming out once a week i mean i come out every day but once a week i come out here with the intention of pruning and continuing to trellis my tomatoes up um up their string in the tunnel uh, so today's the day for that uh, today is pruning trellising day and so I thought I would just take y'all along on the process there show you what I'm doing why I'm doing it um, a couple things I do want to mention before we get started is these are indeterminate tomatoes okay so you can have a determinate or an indeterminate if you're growing determinate tomatoes forget everything I'm saying here don't do this to your determinate tomatoes because that could be uh, that could be devastating so these are indeterminate tomatoes, which just means that they'll continue to grow as long as I let them or as long as the season allows, okay? So they'll just continue to grow straight up or out if I allow them to do that. Um, a determinate tomato won't. It, it has a determined height that it will stop growing at. Um, so you definitely don't want to prune your determinate tomatoes this way. Um, the other thing I wanna say is this is not like the end all be all to how everyone should prune their tomato plants. There are so many different methods to pruning. There are so many different reasons you should prune or not prune for that matter. Uh, I'm in zone 7B. I live in Arkansas. It is so humid out here. Um, I mean, it's not, it gets hot here, but more than that, it gets very humid. It's not uncommon for us to have, you know, 100% humidity uh, any given day in the summer. So that being said, my main reason for pruning is to prevent diseases. Uh, fungal diseases especially, fungal and bacterial really, but fungal diseases love hot, moist, humid environments to grow in, okay? So this is the perfect area in Arkansas where it gets really hot and really humid. They thrive in our climate. So I prune specifically to allow a lot of airflow 
uh, to, to fight those fungal diseases, okay? So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. That's why I'm hard pruning. I'll show you what hard pruning is. I'll show you how I'm pruning off suckers. There are tons of videos out there on how to prune a tomato plant, how to prune them, um, how to prune your suckers. Uh, but something that's going to be new to me this year that I wanted to share with you is pruning the actual fruit cluster itself. Okay, so I'm actually going to be going in on some of these plants. I can't quite commit to doing it to every single one because it makes me really nervous. Um, but I'm actually going to be going in and trimming off some of the flowers or the, the, the very small fruits uh, on some of these clusters. And I'll tell you why as we get going. Okay, so this is one of my Cherokee purples here. Um, as you can see, to start with, I am pruning to one liter. So that basically just means that I'm pruning to one main stalk, if you will, all the way up this string. Okay, so I have to prune this tomato this way. It doesn't just naturally grow this way. So if you'll see here, and I'll show you um, on the next one down, I actually need to do some pruning. But the first thing I look for when I come out is if you can look here from the ground down here all the way up to this first set of fruit clusters there are no branches here okay so I have gone in and over time I've gradually clip, clipped them off that's for a couple of reasons one the main reason is because I want plenty of airflow to come through here and that's going to help prevent a lot of my fungal diseases um, I also don't want I don't want to have these low branches where the leaves can can drip down or droop down and land themselves on the ground you'll start to get um, soil on the ground there are things that live in the soil that can be bad for your plant you don't want to get them on your leaves so I make sure I never have leaves touching the ground um, the other thing is you know these leaves the foliage here it provides a lot of shade for the fruit um, and that just helps to prevent sun scald so your fruit can can be burned by the sun so I like to have leaves above to help protect the fruit here but the leaves below really aren't serving a purpose and in fact they can be really detrimental to your plants if you don't have good airflow especially if you live in a climate that's as humid as mine um, if you'll see down here let's see if I can show you this so I have my plant here. Let me pan you down a little bit. So here's the ground moving up. You can see here. Let me move some of these out of the way. So I have several branches in here. Here's my first set of fruit clusters up here, if I'm seeing correctly. Yeah. So what I can do here um, with my shears in just a little bit is I'll come in and I'll clip off these lower branches. Um, so what I'll do here is come in with my shears. Uh, first, these aren't ideal. These are really bulky and big. You can get a smaller pair that have smaller blades on them and really that's what's ideal for pruning, but this is what I've got. Um, so this is what I'm gonna be using. You want to make sure that your shears are clean and sanitized every time you prune. Uh, fungus and bacteria can get on here and you can actually transfer it to other plants if you have it on there. So you wanna make sure your shears are nice and clean these may not look clean, but they are. Uh, and all I'm going to do is come in here and just snip off these lower branches. Okay. Um, and I'm generally pretty aggressive with it. And you can see that. Okay. And as time goes on, as these fruits ripen and they're harvested, I'll go in and I'll continue to snip up this main branch here. Um, until the plant gets to the top of the tunnel and it's time to rip them out. I didn't beat the rain. Can you hear the rain? <laughs> I'm gonna have to run back to the house. Um, okay, so that's the first thing I do. I go through and, and clip off those lower lying branches. Just get rid of those, get them out of the way. Okay, step two for the pruning is um, you'll hear a lot of people use the phrase sucker. So you have suckers that grow on your tomato plants. Um, and if you know anything about pruning, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with a sucker. Let me bring this guy in here. So you see this here, right here that I have my hand on. This is my main branch. Here, this longer 90 degree angle branch that comes out of 90 degree angle. That is my leaf node and that's um, my main branch there and then you see this guy here coming out at a 45 degree angle um, that's my sucker 
okay? So potentially you could let this grow and this guy will produce fruit for you, okay? It'll, it'll produce its own big, almost essentially its own big tomato plant. So people will actually sometimes come in and clip these off and they'll propagate these and turn them into a whole nother plant that they can put in the ground, which is pretty cool. But I come in and I clip these off for a couple of reasons. One is I'm still just trying to have this one main branch. Okay, I don't need another branch. If I let this guy continue to grow, I would have to put another string up to trellis him up as well. Um, he's also hindering my airflow in here. The more leaves and foliage and stuff I have, the less airflow I have, the more fungal disease I'm gonna potentially have. The other thing is, you know, if you let your suckers grow, you're gonna get more flowers, you're gonna get more fruit. However, that's one plant that's having to put all of this energy into developing and producing all of these fruits. So likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a lot of fruit, but they're gonna be smaller. They're not gonna be as good quality as if you were to allow them to develop fewer fruits, but focus more energy on developing those fruits. So all I'm gonna do is come in here. So this was my main branch. This is my um, leaf node or my branch that's coming out here. And this guy that comes out at a 45 degree angle, that's my sucker. Again, these aren't ideal because they are big and bulky. Um, but all I'm gonna do is come in, whoop. And this is hard to do one-handed as I injure my plant there. <laughs> all for the sake of YouTube. Um, and that's my sucker that I clipped off. So again, you could take this guy, you could set him in a jar of water. He'll develop roots all where you see those little fibers, those little hairs. It will develop roots. You could potentially have a whole nother tomato plant here if you wanted to. And you know, if you stay on top of pruning um, and you prune regularly, what you'll get is you'll you'll start seeing these sucker developments at a, a lot earlier stage and all you have to do is come in here and just pinch it off versus getting your shears out here, your pruning shears and cutting them off. So you see here, I actually damaged my plant a little bit, which is okay, I mean, no big deal, but obviously you wanna be careful not to cause major damage to your plants because now it's gonna have to put energy into repairing that. Um, so yeah, that's step two in the pruning process. So step three in the pruning process is a new step for me. I've never done it. Uh, it makes me a little anxious, makes me a little sad. Um, again, I'm not gonna do it to every single tomato plant I have in here because I don't, I don't quite trust the method yet. However, I have, um, well, just this morning I read some studies on using this method and how it is beneficial for growing in a market garden high tunnel setting. Um, and that is pruning your actual fruit clusters, okay? So I'm gonna take you over here and show you what I've got. And I was actually really proud of this. And now I'm like, dang, I'm gonna have to go in and do something about it. Um, but you see, see all of these fruits here that I have developing. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two more, two or three more flowers on there. So that's a huge fruit cluster that's going to produce quite a few tomatoes if they all pan out and they actually produce. However, that's also a lot of energy that plant, that one tomato plant's having to put into developing this giant cluster of fruits. So potentially what you're gonna get is a lot of tomatoes, but they're gonna be small. Um, they're not gonna be that ideal size, especially when it comes to like marketability. Uh, for like a backyard garden, a home garden, you know, that's no big deal. But when, when you're thinking of like market garden, market garden setting, you want, you want that consistent size fruit and you want it to be um, visually appealing. Obviously you want it to taste good, but it, there's something to be said about having visually appealing fruit as well, okay? So when it comes to pruning your fruit clusters, the study I ha happened to read this morning actually used two different methods. They had their control group, which was not pruning the clusters at all and just letting them go wild. Uh, and then there was a treatment group where they pruned to three fruits per cluster. And then there was another treatment group that pruned to six fruits per cluster. And ultimately at the end of the study, they found that with pruning the clusters, what you were getting was a more consistent size fruit, a good size fruit, um, but you weren't actually reducing your total yield. So the, the, the poundage or the amount of fruit that you were getting at the end of the season was the same as if, as if you 
uh, weren't pruning your fr fruit clusters. But the ones that didn't have their fruit cl clusters pruned, this is like a tongue teaser for me for some reason. Uh, but the ones that didn't have the fruit cl <laughs> the ones that didn't have the fruit clusters pruned were producing more fruits. They were just smaller and they weren't really that marketable. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go in. I've got this, this first row right here behind me is a mostly Cherokee purples. Um, and that's actually one of the fruits that they tested in this study that I read this morning. Um, so I'm going to take about half of this row and I'm going to go in and I'm going to prune to three fruits per cluster, which is a little heartbreaking and it's giving me a little anxiety right now. Uh, but we're going to do it and we're going to do our own experiment this year and just see how that works out for us. Um, so yeah, let me show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, so I think this is probably the perfect example right here. I've got this cluster, okay? I've got one, two, three decent sized little fruits on here starting to develop. I've got a flower there. I've got this little guy that's trying to uh, develop. And then I've got a couple more flowers over here on this whole cluster. So what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll prune every single one of these little flowers. And even this little guy here, I'm going to go ahead and prune him off. I'm only going to allow these three fruits to grow here. Okay. Um, I think it's important to note that I'm only going to prune the clusters that actually have promisable fruits on them already. So if I just have like a cluster of flowers, I'm not going to prune that yet because potentially something's going to happen. Uh, if I prune, if I go ahead and find a cluster of flowers um, and I prune to three flowers, you know, what if one of those buds falls off or, you know, I, I don't know, it produces something that, um, you know, just looks kind of funky or, or whatever. I'm going to go ahead, just like I've got here, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to give it time to produce three halfway decent looking fruits and then I'm going to prune off um, the other flowers or the other small fruits that have already started to develop. Uh, is that really the way to do it? I don't know but that's what makes sense to me because <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. So again I'm going to do this one-handed um, which is not advisable but that's what we're doing because I'm not fancy. I don't have all that fancy equipment to do this. So you see here, oh let's see if I can show you see here it's hard probably hard to see and i'm just gonna clip this guy off i'll show it to you that did hurt my heart a little bit because it actually had a little fruit on there these were potentially going to be three fruits themselves i'm not going to allow that to happen um, and the hope here is that these guys will now have the potential to be larger to be a more consistent size um, and just to be a better all around fruit versus having more fruit that are smaller and maybe a little less consistent in size, okay? I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna do it to these guys. Like I said, I'm gonna do it to about half of this row and just keep an eye on it this year and see, does this really work for us? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited and I'm a little like, er, I don't know, but uh, let, me, let me get this done and I'll meet back with you. Okay, just about done with the first row of tomatoes here. And I did want to show you something that I just ran across. Um, somehow, in pruning several weeks back, I managed to prune off the top of my tomato plant as opposed to the sucker. And, um, you know, th that'll happen, especially if you're not, if you're new to pruning, making pruning mistakes, it's going to happen. That it's just, um, there's a learning curve there. So, let me show you what I did here uh, when I actually, actually actually pruned off the top of my tomato plant here and how I'm going to correct it. So it's not a total loss if you accidentally prune off the top of your indeterminate tomato plant. So let me show you how I'm handling that here. So this plant, it grows up, up, up all the way. Um, and it actually was supposed to continue to grow straight up here. However, I have my fruit cluster here. I have my... 
uh, leaf node or my branch here and you can see I have my sucker here somehow I don't I don't even remember doing it but apparently I clipped off the top so all I'm gonna do here is leave the sucker I'm gonna let it continue to grow and so the sucker is now gonna turn into my main branch and then I'll continue to prune that sucker up as it grows Okay, so it's not a total loss cause. Uh, you know, ideally you don't want to clip off the top of your tomato plant, um, but you know, it happens and we're just gonna continue to go with it with this sucker. I wanna show you another thing that you can potentially run into when you're pruning. So this is a cherry tomato. Um, you see I've got my one liter or my one main stalk running up and then here is the top. And you can kind of see here it almost like it appears that it's split into two branch or two main stalks here in this kind of v um i mean if i wanted to i could put another string in i guess and, and trellis this one to one string and trellis this one to another string and let them grow up however if you really look at it closely you'll see you know you got your main stalk here and then here was my leaf node my branch that came out here was my main stalk, and then this was my sucker, and I've really just kind of let it get out of control. So what I'm gonna do, as much as it is painful, um, because it does have, it already has little flower clusters on it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and snip off this whole sucker here, okay? So I'll just continue to let this main branch grow. Okay, tunnel or tomatoes are officially pruned and trellised up. Everything's looking good. I am being eaten alive by mosquitoes right now. It is raining. I'm going to see if I can convince Tyler to bring his truck down here and come pick me up. Um, I hope this video is helpful to you. I hope uh, it encourages you to try pruning if you feel like it will help your yield or your garden. Um, yeah, I'll catch y'all next time. Bye.